Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a video update for this 1-6 scale SDKFZ222 German armored car. Since the last video update, progress has been made to the model's armored cab as well as the mounting system which mounts the cab to the model's chassis. Quick walk around. We can see the cab is all assembled and bodywork has been done to delete any gaps that would have been remaining from where the panels would have intersected. More work will be required for the bodywork and more to this will follow as the build progresses. To get an idea of what it required to assemble the upper hull, we're going to go back to when the armor car panels were still on the sprue and there I'll describe the work that was required to get the model up to the way it is right now. Before you go ahead and start assembling the upper hull, it is important to go ahead and label all of the panels before you remove them from the sprue. This is because there's a lot of panels and once they're removed off the sprue, it is going to become very easy to get this orientated. This is also true for the front plate here which has the driver slits in two separate locations. If we notice the bigger one is on the driver's side while there's a smaller one adjacent to it. If this plate is inverted, you will have an incorrect location for the periscopes. To actually remove the parts from the sprue, the tool I will be using will be the Dremel Multimax oscillating tool. The oscillator is very good at cutting panels off of these large plastic sheets. And if you look back in my earlier YouTube video update for the 222, you will see me use the piece in action. In addition to using the tool, it's also a good idea to position a large, flat, thick piece of styrofoam on the work surface. The styrofoam acts as a buffer and when you're cutting through the plastic with the saw blade, once the blade penetrates through the plastic, the blade will enter into the soft styrofoam which will prevent the blade from dulling. Cutouts that need to be made to the lower portion of the cab are the inlets here where the chassis connects to the swing arm. On the real 222, there was a small cutout right here and on each of the other four locations where the chassis meets the swing arm. And this allowed for the, ch the cap to fit flush with the frame and allowed access and clearance for the swing arm mount and the swing arm itself. In addition to the cutout, a small little channel will be fabricated out of sheet styrene, which will is also found on the real vehicle. And here's the cabin. And here's the cab all assembled with the panels from before. Now, the panels are just glued on, and the way to assemble them is to use pretty much glue and a lot of tape and you're going to have to be patient with this because you have to actually have to let the glue set and dry. Once the glue set and dry, the piece becomes a lot more solid and a lot more rigid. In addition to using glues and tape, I also use small little bits of wire to hold the thing together almost as like a jig. The way I do that is I take the panels and I drill a small little hole in the two panels. I then insert a piece of floor wire glue the floor wire into each section of the panel and then everything just then folds to shape. The wire adds a little bit of strength to the to the whole shell and also aids in holding it together and gives it a little bit more strength than glue alone. If we notice that the panels themselves do have a lot of overhanging and gaps to be removed. This is normal and can easily be sanded down and plugged up with body filler. This material itself sands very easily and is also glues very easily, which is why 8th inch thick styrene plate is a very popular medium with 1-6 scale model makers when it comes to building vehicles. To refine the cabin into shape and to remove all of these overhanging plastic pieces I will be using the Black & Decker Mouse Palm Sander complete with 120 grit sandpaper. The 120 grit is a nice type of sandpaper for this plastic. The Any 
anything coarser will really scuff up the surface and anything finer will be too fine and will need to be replaced before the actual sanding is complete. 120 does an ample job, is a nice medium grit which replaces, which removes all of the overhanging yet does not over scuff up the plastic surface. And here we have the wheel wells completely fabricated and mounted to the interior portion of the vehicle. If we look at it from the side, we have the cutouts for the swing arms. The wells themselves were all fabricated out of 8th inch thick sheet Lexan, as well as some thin sheet styrene for the top portion of the wheel well. The wells themselves are just simply glued to the styrene base of the shell. Added to the chassis are these small little straps that we have on these five portions of the lower portion of the chassis frame. What these are is these are the mounts that connect the armor cabin to the box frame. On the 222, the way the cabin would mount would be via these small little clamps. This angle plate here bolts to the bottom portion of the 222's cab of the, the armor and the body plates. Then this small little channel over here, this bent piece of steel, actually wraps around the tube frame on the chassis box frame, like so. The way it gets secured is that there's a small plate that gets fitted to the bottom portion here of these screws and that plate is held on via two nuts. The brackets themselves are all scratch built and are fabricated out of sheet steel which is all soldered together construction. On the ends here we have two pieces of threaded rod which have been soldered to the brace. As the way it was described in the earlier scene, the pieces will slide over the box frame as such and then will be bolted with a securing plate to the bottom which will hold everything together. Because of the shape of the 222's armored cab, the brackets must first be mounted to the cab and then the whole, the whole assembly would then get mounted to the frame. This is as per the real vehicle. Now that the cab mounts have been created, I can now work on the model's floorboards. You have to do the floorboards after these small pieces of the frame mounts because what the floorboards have to actually be cut out and worked around these mounting straps. This has to be done because if you don't cut around the straps, there will be colliding with each other, which will cause fit issues once you're ready to assemble all the sub-assemblies. And here we can see the straps have been temporarily fitted to the upper hull and have been positioned onto the frame as if it was going to be bolted on. Now the pieces are not going to be bolted on permanently just yet because I still need to do some work on the model's interior. Once the interior progresses further, the, the top portion of the cab will be mounted to the frame permanently. At this setup, the only thing that will be used to mount the cab to the chassis will be the fasteners. Absolutely no adhesives will be used for this application, just like it is on the actual vehicle. And here we can see everything mounted on the interior portion of the frame. If we notice that the floorboards haven't been added yet, this is because now I will cut out paper templates which will be used for the mock-up of the model's floorboards. Also we can see that the screws are a little bit long on the interior portion. This is because they are temporarily put on. After filming, they will be removed and will be replaced with shorter bolts as well as nut fasteners to secure them fully to the cab. And that concludes this video update for this 1-6 scale German World War II SD KFZ 222 armored car. Stay tuned for more video updates as well as detail upgrades. Stop by and like us on Facebook. And also, don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds, as well as 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.